Add those together and we see a story of two owners. Modest outflows under the previous regime, but from 2021, the cash outflows have stepped up significantly as Game Changer 20 looked to revive Ipswich's fortunes. Across the 10 years, 8 million cash has been spent, and mainly in the last three years. I think everyone knows that you know the owners are coming in with big ambition. They've invested a lot in the squad. They've invested in myself and my staff, and the, the ambition is to, you know, to get Ipswich back up towards the top levels of English football. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we head to Suffolk to unravel the financial story of Ipswich Town. Flashback 2014, and Ipswich were stationed in the Championship. However, after 17 consecutive years in the second tier, the Tractor Boys suffered relegation to League One in 2019. Change would be afoot with a takeover by Game Changer 20 in 2021. And with new ownership, Ipswich would secure promotion back to the championship. On the sidelines, eight different managers have presided over the Portman Road dugout. McCarthy, Clug, Hurst, Lambert, Gill, Cook, McGreal, McKenna. Now let's turn our attention off the pitch. What unfolded behind the scenes? Ipswich saw revenue steadily increase in those early championship years, and despite relegation and COVID, Ipswich have regrouped and delivered their best revenue of the decade in 2023 at 21.8 million. Let's uncover the forces behind this growth. Time for a deep dive into revenue streams. Starting with match day revenues, despite being in the third tier, Ipswich brought in 8 million in 2023 surpassing all six championship years. How did attendance figures drive this? Having peaked previously at under 20,000, gates surged in 2023 to an average of 26,000. Commercial revenues have also soared, producing almost 10 million. Conversely, TV and Football League revenues remained down from a peak of 8 million back in 2019 in the championship. League One promotion produced 3.9 million in 2023, by league position, we can see the staggering jumps in match day and commercial revenues have disrupted the picture. 2023's result means average League One revenues rose to 13.7 million. It's put us in a strong league position. Now, let's dive into profits. Unfortunately, the Ipswich bottom line isn't looking as bright. Except for 2015, they've been in the red every season. With 2023, their largest loss at almost 18 million. Until this year, losses have been consistent irrespective of league position, but recent years mean average losses in League One are almost 10 million. So what's going on? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer grey out the revenue and dive into staff costs. Other than a reset in 2020 following relegation, staff costs have steadily increased, with 2023's wage bill sitting at 19.8 million. Despite being the largest figure, this year as a percentage of revenue was best in class, reducing to 91%. And how do these costs translate into points on the pitch for Ipswich? Across both divisions, points have generally cost between two and 300K each. The notable exception, the championship relegation year, where prices soared to 600k per point. Even with staff costs alone, the financial pressure of life in the Football League is clear. Next up, operating costs. It's also clear that following 2021's takeover, operating costs have escalated, reaching 17 million in 2023. Whilst the full picture isn't clear, Ipswich owners have indicated their commitment to invest across all areas of operations. Alongside that, what we can glean is spend in youth, community and women's football projects has increased to almost 4 million in 2023. But from an EBITDA perspective, those investments take a toll on the profit picture. Third, stadium facilities. These have remained largely consistent, reaching 1.5 million in 2023. Which leads us to transfer fees. Since 2015, Ipswich have consistently brought in transfer profits. 
2023's promotion season the first to see a net cost of 0.7 million. Biggest income was sent back in 2015, fueled by the sales of Tyrone Mings and Aaron Cresswell. It's evident that player trading has helped offset the club's operational losses, especially in those early years, although not enough to get into profit in 9 out of 10 years. Ipswich are also transparent enough to disclose their financial fair play submissions, a decision not shared by many other clubs. As a reminder, on a three-year rolling basis, average financial fair play FFP losses must not exceed 13 million per year. For full transparency, there is a discrepancy between Ipswich calculations for 2021 and what's in the financial statements, but it does not change the overall story, so let's proceed. Starting with operating profit, we must also include any interest paid or received to give a full financial loss for the year. Teams are then allowed to exclude costs on the following items. Stadium and facility spend, depreciation, youth development spend, community development spend, women's football spend, interest on redeemable preference shares. But in 2022, Ipswich must also exclude two and a half million of COVID related one-off income. The result is Ipswich are below the 13 million threshold in all three seasons. However, 2024 may be a tougher assessment with the combination of life back in the championship and 2021's result no longer contributing. On average, the margins in League One are not pretty. 72% operating losses, the price for funding Ipswich's revival. Which is frustrating, but that's, that's football. Let's see if cash aligns with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're scrutinising the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBIT dial line items, definitely mirrors profit. Cash has flowed out of Portman Road every season and at increasing rates. Over the decade, 65 million has been spent by the Tractor Boys. Now let's shift our attention back to transfer fees. Do those profits translate to cash? It appears so. Ipswich have brought cash in six of the last 10 seasons. In total, 17 million across the decade in transfers. Add those together and we see a story of two owners. Modest outflows under the previous regime, but from 2021, the cash outflows have stepped up significantly as Game Changer 20 looked to revive Ipswich's fortunes. Across the 10 years, 48 million cash has been spent, and mainly in the last three years. I think everyone knows that you know, the owners are coming in with big ambition. They've invested a lot in the squad. They've invested in myself and my staff, and the, the ambition is to, you know, to get Ipswich back up towards the top levels of English football. So how much funding has been required? Initially, cash funding is steady, but from 2021 again, the cash injections have increased significantly. Across the 10 years, a total of 62 million has been put into the club. So what's transpired since? At the time of recording, Ipswich's investments appear to be paying off, with the Tractor Boys firmly in the hunt for back-to-back -back promotions and a possible return to the Premier League after a 20-year exile. Will Game Changer continue to fund the club's resurgence on and off the pitch? Only time will tell. Until next time.